None shall pass! Run, fly! I will protect you all! I shall summon a great archer! Oh. Just... Stop! Everyone, stop! 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 Oh! oh. oh. I've, I've just... What? Mother! I am in the middle of a battle! I'm in Kazmodan! No, it's the bell rock. You know the bell rock I spoke to you about it last week. Yes, I will be there on Saturday. I know Elrond is going to be there. Yes, 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 I... Yes, potato salad, yes, and rolls, yes, I'll get six. Twelve? What do you want twelve for? There's only going to be five of us. Oh, yes, all right. Twelve rock. twelve... Twelve rolls and potato salad and uh, white wine, non-alcoholic. Yes, yes, yes. Ah, uh, yes. No, I won't bring the hobbits with me this time. Yes, I remember what was happening. No, I'm sending them. I'm sending them somewhere else. Don't worry. Yes. Okay. Fine. Fine. Yes. Oh no! I, no, I don't need to speak to Dad. No, 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 no. Hello, Dad. Yes, Casmodan. Yes, yes, nice bridge. Yeah, <laughs> we should fish here somehow. Yes, absolutely. Oh, my God. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Right, yes. Saturday, yes, potato salad and six rolls. Uh, I've got that ready. Yeah. Yes, yes, have it. Oh, look, I've got to go. I've got to go. Someone's waiting for me. Someone's waiting for me. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll speak to you. I'll speak to you later. Right. Good. Thanks. Okay. Bye bye. Love you. Love you. Love you. Love you. Love you. Love you. Now, none shall pass. No, 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 no. Not you. Not you. No, no, no. I didn't, you didn't hang up. Why didn't you hang up? Everyone hangs up when you say goodbye. It's, it, oh, yes. Potato salad and bread rolls I, and wine. I got it. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of How to Be a Great Player. Today we're looking at family. And family for role players generally has three states um that they can possibly exist in. and we're going to look at those three states we're going to unpack why and which one you should choose for your next character and what benefits they bring to choosing those now if you're wondering what is going on here oops uh, there with ghosts of so this one here what are th this here ghosts of salt marsh is a new show that i'll be running on twitch.tv forward slash dnd this is the official dnd show where we will be running a group of international adventurers through The Ghosts of Saltmarsh, which is a new adventure book that's coming out on the 21st of May. You can pick up copies from Amazon. Links are on our website as well. If you want to support us, go through that for the affiliate benefits that we get. Now, family. Family is oftentimes considered a non-event in terms of character background. Those of you who've watched my videos in the past, however, will know that I place a huge amount of emphasis on family because I truly believe family is very important in terms of determining a lot of your character. And what's more so important, I think, in terms of role-playing opportunities is the state that they are in. The three states are dead, usually, most, most, I say most, a lot of players, characters that I have encountered in my many, many years as a player and as a GM, their family are dead. They're orphans. There might be a sister living somewhere or a daughter, but generally speaking, the parents are yeah, dead. I never understand this, but we're going to unpack that. We're going to unpack that. Other is the state of, where are your family? Oh, there are other... They're elsewhere, they're in a different dimension, they're lost, I don't know, we got separated by a giant ship sinking, uh, they're on a different starship, I never speak to them, don't know. Very similar to dead, but not as final. And then finally, alive. Very seldom do we come across players whose characters have parents that are alive and well, and, you know, cooking and baking at home. 
We do see this for comedic effect, absolutely. If you've been watching the Orville series, there's certainly a lot of parenthood that comes up in that show. So it is definitely something that we can look at. So let's jump straight into it. Dead. Dead characters are a cliché. There's no other way to put it. Oh, your parents are dead. Right. Yes, of course they are. You're an orphan. Yep. Grew up on the streets, fended for yourself, raised by a, you know, strange old man who had a weird desire to pick up street kids and raise them up. Mm hmm. Yep. There are all kinds of ramifications to dead parents. They are a cliche. They're an easily managed when they're dead. Oh, they're dead. I don't have to worry about them. What does that bring, though? Well, when parents die off, and they, they do, it happens. It's, it's horrid, absolutely horrid, and we all wish that it wouldn't happen. But when they do, things change. No longer are they the older generation. Now your character becomes the older generation. There's a baton that's passed to a large degree. The independence that everybody craves in terms of, oh, parents are dead, raised myself. Okay, that does indeed indicate a certain amount of strength, of character, a resilience, a definite, definite ability to handle and take care of themselves. This is great. However, it does sometimes engender the isolationist or the solo kind of adventurer. I don't need help from anyone else because I've survived on the streets on my own forever. I haven't learned how to work as a team because I have been on my own for so long. There are some things. So how do you avoid the cliché? Well, the cliché, of course, is that the parents died either as a result of the character's actions. My parents burned to death because I was playing with candles uh, and set the curtains on fire. Or it was a horrific science accident and I accidentally squashed the room that they were in down to the size of a pin and liquefied everybody inside of it. It could be because the character's actions or it is some kind of malevolent force. The people who were after me got through my parents first and I feel guilty over that. So again, the cliches, you've got to look at these things and say, okay, well, the cliche would be the parents died as a result of my actions. What if... To avoid the cliché of the parents dying as a result of the PC's actions, what if the parents didn't die? What if the parents are alive but unable to communicate? They're in a catatonic state. They're in comas. They're uh, trapped inside crystals. So they're dead. No, we are avoiding the cliché by saying that they're not dead. Let's... Let's see what would happen from a story perspective if they were still alive. Is that more interesting? And ultimately, I think the answer immediately is yes. My parents are kind of dead. What do you mean kind of dead? They're undead in the basement and I can't kill them. There's an interesting twist on things. It's not as novel as one might hope, but it's definitely more interesting than, oh, they died. Right, that's going to work for you, is it? Good. So that's something that you can look at, is how to, to twist it. Another way to look at it, another thing that you can do, is you can look for replacements. Who replaced the parental figures in your character's life to give your character a sense of guidance, a sense of purpose? You might want to say, no one. I taught myself everything. Sure, you can. Again, though, I think that that takes away from opportunities that you're going to see when we look at living parents. You won't have them if you are on your own, isolated, raised yourself uh, and survived exactly as is without anyone else's help. If your parents died, but, oh, my parents died when I was very young. I was then sent to my aunt's house and my great aunt and my aunt it was a house full of aunts, uh, basically they raised me and took care of me, which explains why I have this incredible bridge playing capability, but can't fence to save my life. By replacing the parents with something else, you're still giving yourself a lot of narrative and story choices whilst having the satisfaction of having dead parents, if that's what you're after. Dismissing parents and just getting rid of them by having them die takes away a lot of advantages for you. I'm not a huge fan of dead parents, in case that wasn't clear. Other parents are tricky, but a lot more interesting. 
than dead parents. Other parents require you to immediately suggest and talk to the GM. I want my parents to have been abducted by aliens. Okay. Interesting. This is a fantasy setting, but sure, maybe the uh, Mind Flayers or Slard, a multidimensional creature, abducted them. Sure. I kind of like that. They've been removed from my existence, so they're not necessarily um, around, which is kind of dead, but they are still kind of alive. What this requires you to have is a solution that you present to the GM. My parents were abducted by aliens and taken to the planet Zob. I plan on having my character get to planet Zob one day after intergalactic flight has been invented and go and rescue them. All that I have is this little medallion that says made in the planet Zob. And that is indication that that's where my parents were taken. They're still alive and I want to go and save them. The reason why you have to talk to the GM is because the GM needs to add this information to their repertoire in terms of adventures and go, well, I've got nothing planned for this week. Let's go to Zob. Let's go and rescue your parents. A friendly alien passes by with an intergalactic starship and offers to take you anywhere in the galaxy. Where would you like to go? You need to have a solution as to how to get your parents back. How to get them from wherever they are or whatever state they might be in this other state. You need to solve Schrodinger's problem. Get them back. Define a state for the parents. And so you need to provide that solution to the GM. Or at least you need to provide the situation to the GM so the situation the GM can then start working through that. But generally speaking, if my parent, if my mother was in an issue, in a situation where she had been abducted by aliens and I knew about it, I would devote a lot of my time and resources to trying to get her back after laughing at the aliens for have taken her in the first place because the amount of talking that she does, you can see where I get it from. Nonetheless, the idea would be that you have this bigger goal. You don't want that to override, as with all of the other types of player characters that you can have, you don't want their I must get my family back problem to override the principal narrative problem. It should support it, it should enhance it, and it should happen during downtime and not become the principal focus of the character. If it becomes the principal focus of the character and the character refuses to do anything other than try and get their family back, it starts to derail the campaign and you're going to find that you are no longer favored by the GM and your fellow players might be going, I don't care about your family. I want to save the world from the giant plant eating monsters. And that's more important than your annoying sister who got abducted by hippies and is now living in a cultist commune. The GM might have some great ideas on what to do with that, but the players might go, eh, it's not my, not my bag. You then also need to define what is the current situation. Are the player characters aware of the current situation that the family finds themselves in? If they are, what are they doing about it? So what's the current situation of your player character as well as of the family? The family, it should be a fairly unknown. My family have been abducted by terrorists. I don't know where they are. And the terrorist cell has gone underground after being attacked by the government organization. So I'm following a few shady clues that may lead me somewhere. The solution is that I get my family back, uh, having found where the secret cult is hiding. But currently, all I have is a scrap of paper and an address but I don't know where this address is, and there's a strange name written at the top of it. It simply says, meow, and then an address. The GM will then be able to feed that into your adventures and say, well, you come across a club. The club's name is meow. It's not an address. You realize it's actually a code for the safe inside of Club Meow. And that leads your character onto the next clue. But it shouldn't be the reason why your character is adventuring. Your character should be adventuring because of a whole bunch of other reasons. They want to see the world. They want to make money. They're independent. They are looking for something. Yes, they're looking for their parents, but they don't know where to look. They don't know how to move forward. If they did, well, then they should have just done that before the adventure started. See, that's the important thing, is that if they could have achieved their goal on their own without the support of the party, 
Why didn't they do that before adventuring started? Why did they even bother joining up with the party in the first place? So it becomes very annoying when you have a player who decides, okay, well, my character's now just going to focus entirely on getting back uh, my long-lost granddaughter, and that's all that I'm going to do. Well, why did you start adventuring in the first place? You should have just been trying to get your granddaughter back straight away. If the GM doesn't introduce that as the main plot, then you are derailing the plot by then forcing your issue. However, going along with the flow and every now and again, and especially during downtime, pacing, thinking about how do I get how do I get my granddaughter back? All I've got is this clue, all I've got is this name, all I've got is a location. Speaking to your fellow player characters, can we go to to Shanghai? I think that's where she is because the paper is written on a particular piece of paper that's only manufactured in the Shanghai territories, and I think that someone wrote this name down in Shanghai. If your fellow player characters go, yeah, but we've got to save the world first, go save the world first, then go to Shanghai. Don't say, well, we're going to Shanghai, because I'm not going to go and save the world if not. That's incredibly disruptive to the story. It's incredibly disruptive to your fellow players, and in my opinion, is just bad form. It's saying that your story is more important than anybody else's. And I don't think that that's the case. There are many other people sitting around that table who are telling a singular story, not their own story. So what gives you the privilege of being able to tell your own story? That's something to bear in mind. When we talk about parents who are alive, that's a different kettle of fish altogether. It gives you links. It gives your character links. Well, if mum and dad are still kicking around, uh, we need extra cash. Maybe we can lean on them. Hey, hey, so long since we last saw each other. Can I have $100,000? Might work. You might get the money from them. They certainly will give it to you. Definitely the GM is going to use your parents against you and have them abducted at some point down the line so that they can extort information out of your player character. But that becomes an adventure on its own and should be looked at with relish. Look at that. All of a sudden, just because they're alive, there's a whole adventure just waiting for you. There's two adventures, as a matter of fact. One is to get your parents back. The other one is to actually survive a luncheon with them, especially when you introduce them to the rest of the party. This is gore. Gore Nut Cruncher. Um, he kills people for a little... It's going to be a great table conversation, isn't it? So you have a link. You now have links. Whether it's uh, parents, whether it's children, whether it's siblings, it doesn't matter. You now have a link that exists in the world beyond just your adventuring party. That's an incredibly powerful thing to have. Again, don't abuse it. Those parents, siblings, they will run out of patience eventually and say, you know what? We're done. I'm out. No more supporting of you. Thank you very much. So that is something to bear in mind. They have uses. They have plenty of uses. A, they can provide you with support. But B, oh, um, we need a vehicle. Well, we can hire the car. Well, we can take the car from the parents. We need someone to stay. I have a sister who lives out in this territory somewhere. Let me see if my sister's there. That doesn't have to be predefined, by the way. You don't have to say, well, my sister lives here at the time of character creation. If by just listing the fact that you have a sister, if you have found that you have come to a dead end in your investigations in the story that you're currently running in, you could always turn to the gym and say, is there a chance that my sister lives in this city? Because then I'd like to track her down, go and have a coffee with her and see what she knows. It's a lifeline that you can throw out to the GM to give back to you the opportunity of bringing you back on track. Ultimately, just because you and your fellow players are confused doesn't mean that the GM isn't responsible for that confusion. So having family gives you lots of uses. There's lots of things you can do with having a family. And I know it sounds like you're just using your family, using, using, using. So the flip side of that is the RP moments, the moments of tenderness of affection that you can show to your parental units, to your children, to your siblings. Yes, there might be antagonism and coldness, but there's also a huge amount of opportunity for the role-playing aspect to come through. So you can use them as links, you can use them as, as devices to get stuff and to acquire stuff and to, to do all that kind of stuff, but you can also role-play with them. Let the GM have a few notes, what my father's like, what my mother's like. Let the GM decide what they are. It doesn't really matter. Be prepared. Just go with the flow. The GM is in charge of NPCs, and so that includes your parents. 
let it unfold and enjoy this entire thing. So when we look at living parents, I think they provide a lot less trauma, a lot less um, issues that you need to work out to avoid cliche to begin with. But then once you have them, they then can do all sorts of extra bits and pieces on top. The annoying mother who always phones in the middle of battle, those kinds of things, yes, they're a bit cliched. But they're also real. I have several friends who have parents who like to phone or certainly liked to phone in the past and just didn't get the concept that whilst you were busy role playing, the world is at risk. So chatting about stuff. The opening of the video was actually a channeling of a conversation that I remember one of my players having in the middle of our battle. We all had to stop whilst the person spoke about bringing bloody well bread rolls and potato salad uh, to this family function. Anyway, so it was definitely a lot of fun uh, to, 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 to listen to that um, and be thankful for my own. Uh, dear wonderful mother and sister. So family, much more to it than initially meets the eye. There's lots more opportunities that you can pull out of having a family in your character background. Don't dismiss them as simply being dead or gone. They are much more useful to you alive. That way the GM can kill them off later and give your character even more emotional maturity as well as role-playing opportunities and adventures as you seek revenge against those who have wronged me familiar. So, what are your thoughts on family? Let me know down below. Do you think that I put too much emphasis on family? Or do you think that perhaps it's time that you started to include a little bit of family in your role-playing? Let me know your thoughts down below. Until next time, I wish you and yours the very happiest playing. Right, so, we are to take the ring from here. Oh my god! It's... Hello, how are you? Yes, I did like it. Thank you very much. Yes, the sweat is lovely. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, and, and you can tell, you can tell John I have, I've subscribed. Yes, yes, I have. Yes, so he shouldn't, he shouldn't worry anymore. Yes, good. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, oh, I, I hear. Is that a bell? Is someone at the door? You better go and check that out. I, I, it's okay. I'll, I'll phone you back later. Okay, thanks. Love you. Bye. Whew. That was a good dodge. <laughs> Goblin bell. Must remember that one for next time. Yeah. Um, yeah, they realize they don't have a bell.